Hi guys, it's Amanda and I want to welcome you back to the channel. Um, today I'm going to do just a little um, kind of how to get started budgeting, what uh, what you need to do. It's not necessarily things you need to have, just things you need to do. And I'll show you some of the things that I've used or that I recommend if you want if you want to buy anything to go along with it. Um, before I get started, I am going to show what will be going up in my Etsy shop tomorrow. Um, so I am going to start having new releases on Fridays, and so there will be a mixture of digital products and um, like print and ship kind of products so starting off for this week we have six scratch off challenges and then we have three sets of um there'll be digital download option and there'll be a kind of print and ship option so if you want these printed off and sent to you um for you know whatever reason so the first one we have is this one and it is our little beach scratch off it does add up to fifty dollars so and there are six now the option these are laminated um and they have scratch offs now the the scratch off colors may change um i have i have the silver and i have the gold and i have the holographic so if something wants to happen and i run out of the gold and have to put silver on this one then i hope i hope that's okay um if it's not you know if you want a specific or if you want a specific color if you prefer the holographic to the to the gold or the silver um you can leave that in the notes of your order and i will do my best to make sure i put the stickers that you want on there um no guarantees because it's kind of crazy but um and if i run out you'd have the option of waiting till more come in or um you can just take what i have on hand um anyway i digress I, I'll probably cut that whole part out. Anyway, um, so these are the beach ones. They do add up to $50. The next one is the summer challenge. This one adds up to 100 So I think the denominations in this are 5, 10, 15, and 20. So um, kind of a range on what you're going to get. Um, then we have our ice cream challenge. I love this ice cream. It's so cute. And I like the holographs with the ice cream. I thought that looked pretty cute. And this one adds up to 45. So this one has some lower, uh, numbers in it. Then we have our pet collection. So this one is our little puppy. Isn't he so cute? I should say animal collection because not all of these are necessarily pets. Um, so this one adds up to 40. And you have six scratch offs. Then we have our bunny. This is Thumper. Um, but it's just listed as a bunny challenge. Um, and this one adds up to 60. And then the last scratch off we have is our turtle. He's so cute. I love him. So anyway, and this one ha adds up to 75. So I think the highest on this one is 15. Pretty sure. It's listed in the description box on Etsy as to what the denomination range is. So, those are the scratch-offs that are available. Here is the printables. Now, if you get this just as a digital download, you just get a PDF of this sheet, and that's it. Um, you can print it as many times as you want to. It's all yours. Um, if you get the print and ship option, um, these will be cut out. And you have the option of having them just shipped as is, or I will laminate them for you, and they'll be cut out of the lamination, and they'll go to you laminated. So they, there is two options on the print and ship. So we have the cow, and the pig, and the little chick. Isn't he cute? So we have that one. We have our earth. I love these like watercolor earths and then that one was just cute so i love i love these these are cute so there's our earth challenge 
and then this one was already up in my shop as a printable um, so I'm just adding a listing if you want this printed and shipped to you because um, I've had a few people ask me if I can print and ship because they don't have printers at home or various reasons um, so I am starting to offer a print and ship option I had to order you know envelopes and all the stuff to where they could all be shipped easily so anyway all of those will be in the shop um, tomorrow Friday June I don't know 21st I think tomorrow's the 21st all right so anyway now we're gonna get into the what you need to budget so basically all you need to budget is a notebook like a plain Jane and for some reason I didn't bring a plain Jane notebook with me to film this but really all you need is a pen and a notebook and you can get by with just that because the first little bit of budgeting is just writing down everything you spend you need to write it down and I need something to write on okay I found paper I said of all the, of all the things I always have paper around and I couldn't find any so anyway so number one beginning budgeting number one write everything All right, write everything down. If you put money in a donation jar at the at the store, if you uh, buy a pack of gum, if you buy a drink, if you buy gas, if you go through the drive-through, if you give money to your kids for, um, you know, getting a pencil at school or paying for lunch or a field trip or everything, everything you spend money on everything you pay online everything you order every subscription every everything write everything down and try to write down like the day it comes out so you can kind of look at what you've got and what you're spending um i'm you don't have to change anything at this point all you're doing is looking at your habits so write everything down do this recommended to do this for three months I have a hard time waiting three months to actually start doing something to fix it um, write everything down and then review your spending at the end of three months now they say three months just because you know you may have a random month where you go on vacation you may have a random month where you know all the fall sports are starting and you're having to pay all those fees and stuff and that's it's not normal like throughout the year or you may have if you're doing it in November and you're buying Christmas you know you're doing Christmas shopping or and Thanksgiving meal and you know or if you've got one month that has a bunch of birthdays um, one month is not a completely accurate representation of what you spend um, so that's why they say three months however if you see that you're spending a thousand dollars a month eating out month two you may want to try to curb that um, so I'm just saying at the end of three months you need to do a good hard look at what you're spending and what categories you're spending in and figure out where your um, where your holes are where are where is money just pouring out um, and that will help you decide you know what you need to limit yourself on and what you're doing good on you know there'll be some areas that you're not spending as much as you thought you were hopefully hopefully all right so then number three Think about, start setting your budget. Um, look at what you spend. Look at what you make in a month. So, 
Um, look at your income. Look at spending. And then see how they relate. Are you spending more than you're bringing in? If you are, you're going to have to cut back. If you're not spending what you're bringing in and you have money left over, what are you doing with that leftover money? Most of us spend what we make or more. Um, well, I won't say most of us. I'll just say a lot. And really, if you're not looking at it, you're more likely to do that than not. So, um, yeah. So, so for overspending... Um, what are your causes? What are you overspending on? Are you overspending and you're putting it on credit cards and your credit cards are, are stacking up? You know, um, that's not good. If you're overspending and you're missing payments, that's not good. Um, so you need to kind of look at also another thing on some months where, you know, you do have a lot of birthdays and a lot of or a lot of sports a lot of a lot of things that you know are going to come up at certain times of the year um i learned a lot um watching the budget mom um because i didn't know what a sinking fund was and if you're new to budgeting you may not know what a sinking fund is but a sinking fund is something that you know is going to come up this could be christmas this could be birthdays. This could be taxes. This could be vacation. Anything, sports, sports cost a lot. Anything that you know is gonna come up through the year and is going to take a big chunk of money to pay that if you don't save for it, then it's gonna come out of your monthly income and which is going to put a hurt on your budget for that month. So that's one thing you need to think at when you're setting your budget. Um, yeah. So when I'm, you can't see any of that because I back up. Okay. So now when I budget, I budget certain sections. Right? So, when I do my budget, I have my income. So, for my monthly, I get paid monthly. Um, so, I write down my income. I teach. So, and my husband and I, we split the bills. So, I pay my stuff. I do my budget. He does his bills. And he does his whatever he does but I have to write it down or I forget through the month and then but this this has saved me I have been budgeting since January of 2022 and it has helped me tremendously tremendously um, so monthly budget do your income do your fixed expenses What stuff has to come out? Do your variable expenses. This is your bills. Debt. Sorry, fixed expenses. Debt. Um, anything that comes out monthly. Or, you know, if it comes out quarterly, you know, depending on what month you're in. Variable expenses. Are things that aren't the same every month. Um, I'm gonna put utilities there. Um, variable expenses are like groceries, uh, transportation. So this, if you have your car, then maybe it's gas and you know oil changes, or um, and you may want to set up a sinking fund for like uh, getting new tires or. Uh, when you want to eventually trade cars or whatever. 
um, groceries, transportation. Um, I always have a personal. I give myself so much money each week, um, and that's personal money. So, for whatever I need, if there's something that comes up or whatever, that's that's my spending money. Um, most of the time, it goes towards food of some sort. Uh, so, groceries, transportation, personal. Um, if you want to put clothing in variable, you can do that. I have a sinking fund for that. Um, pets. Household is often a variable. Household. Pets. Um, just those kind of things that you spend on every month that you might want to have a fun, you know, just a, a pocket of money. This is how much, you know, if you want a coffee fund and once, you know, that way you're kind of limiting yourself from buying your coffee every day. Um, anyway, variable expenses. And then sinking funds. So sinking funds are basically kind of like the things, Christmas, birthdays, taxes, vacation, sports, um, subscriptions that you pay once a year could be sinking funds. Um, if you want to pay your insurance once a year, that could be a sinking fund. Um, just different things like that. Those are, if you want, you know, a house, if you want to do like a remodeling sinking fund, if you're wanting to fix something in your house, sinking funds can be anything you want to save for. And then any extra debt payments and extra savings. The idea is when you get to the bottom, you have zero left. Is that you give every dollar you make a job to do. Whether it goes towards a fixed expense, a variable expense, a sinking fund, it goes towards debt or it goes towards savings. Every dollar that you have that doesn't mean you have no money. You know, you're at zero at the end of the month. That means, you know, if you have $500 left and you want to put in savings, then you have $500 in your savings account should you need it. Um, but the idea here is all of your money is given a job. And that way you don't have the end of the month where you're like, where did my money go? Why am I broke? you know and then you have nothing in savings and you've paid no extra on your debt and you have nothing put back for you know expenses that are going to come up in the future which is the way i lived for the first 39 years of my life um well really i guess i started working at 16 so 16 to 39 there you go that's the way i lived because my parents my parents didn't budget they just they got paid every week and at the end of the week it was gone and they got paid again so that's what I grew up with so this was a whole learning curve for me um, and I'm so thankful that I found it because I don't stress about money anymore I always have money put back for an emergency if something arises and that is that is everything to not have it's like a monkey on your back you know so anyway, so there's beginning budgeting. Um, I am going to share a couple things that if you want to try them, you are, you know, these are some things that I've got that I just wanted to share. Um, the budget book that I use is the Budget by Paycheck workbook from the Budget Mom. Um, so I use this one. It is great. I'm not going to go through all of it. I'll show you kind of a month view. And I think I've already written most of these in. So, like, there's the month view. Then you have five of these where you've got your um, budget tracker. It's got your income, your bills, your envelopes, which this is your fixed expenses, your variable expenses, your sinking funds, your extra debt, your extra savings. And then you should end up with zero at the bottom. Um, this is cash envelopes so you may want to do cash envelopes and i'm going to do another video just on setting up cash envelopes and you know kind of the best ways to do that um so anyway this is where you can write down your categories how much what denominations you want and then at the back of each month there are slips that you can cut out and take to the bank to show them exactly what denominations of bills that you want um, so anyway, you have five weeks because, you know, some weeks have, some months have 
four paychecks. Some months have five, so that just depends. And then you have your expense tracker, so you can write down every single transaction, um, your categories, whether it was a withdrawal, a deposit, and then what your ending balance is on your budget. And you can do this per account. I have two checking accounts. I actually have three checking accounts now. Um, one I don't use. It's just there if I need it. Um, and then you have um, your debt payoff sheet. So you can write down your creditors, your balances, interest rates, minimums, and what order the plan is to pay them off. If you paid any extra, and then you have your monthly debt progress and your overall debt progress, which I fill this out every month. Um, this is the net worth tracker. So you can put what it was last month, what it is this month, your assets, your liabilities, and then what's your, all your information. I don't fill this one out. I'm in a debt payoff journey right now. So I don't even, I don't even look at this. I, the debt payoff is my, is my big focus and it is what it is. Um, this is the budget category breakdown. So you can put your starting balance, what you earned, any other income that you brought in from like sinking funds or anything, um, any that you pulled out of your savings. And then, so all the money that you used this month, your categories, what your budget was, what you spent, what your difference, and then the percentage of your inflow, all of your money you put together, what percentage of that category did you spend was t part of the total budget. Um, and then you've got your debt, your savings, um, kind of how, how that played into everything, how much of your monthly inflow is going to debt and how much is going towards savings. Then you have your categories s comparing last month to this month. So, did you do better on groceries or did you do worse? That sort of thing. You have your meal plan sheet. You have one sheet of note paper and then you have this whole, um, a sheet of teller slips. So, and you have that for every month. At the very beginning, there's some other sheets. I filled these out and I'm not going to show them. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I think I have a video of this of going through this i will try to link it below because i do i do really I, it's my third year using that one i've tried some others so i have the plum paper uh budget financial workbook budget work workbook something anyway and I, I do like it um i used all of it up so i, I didn't bring it to show this one I just got this is the clever girl no yeah clever girl finance with Erin Condren budget planner um, I will link this one also because uh, I just did a review on this one um, and it's just kind of it's undated so you can start at any time and it kind of has the same kind of stuff in it it's got the monthly overview whereas it does not have the weekly sheets that the budget by paycheck does and it's a lot more like it's got savings, debt payments, investments, housing, food, transportation. It doesn't do just bills, variables, sinking funds. And that's the only thing that I don't really do with this one. It's just because it doesn't fit what I need it to as much. I do like this one and I'm going to hold on to it because it is um, undated. I can use it later when I'm not working on paying off debt. I may use it later. I may end up doing it a giveaway with it. I've not decided. But it has magical budgets on it, so it's kind of hard for me to do that. Um, a smaller option is the Erin Condren budget book. These are just the small notebooks. Um, and I don't think this one... No, I've not used this one. So, um, it's just the budget book by Erin Condren. Um, you can get these. These are like the petite planners. Um, so, you have savings trackers those are kind of cool um, and then you've got your monthly overview which is kind of similar it's just smaller so I mean if you don't have a lot future purchases future bills I'm not really sure what that is spending summaries this would be really handy to write down your spending 
if you want to carry it with you. Um, and I think that's really what I got this for was just, I don't carry my big one with me and it was, it's hard for me to keep up with what I spend when I'm out if I'm using cash. You know, if I'm using my card, I can go back. Um, but if I'm using cash, it's a little trickier. This does come with a sheet of stickers. And I was looking, yeah, at the back, after it's got all the months. Oh, that one's done. So then it's got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight spots for debt trackers. So it's small. I think these are maybe like $16. These aren't too much. Um, and then I have this that I got at Hobby Lobby, I believe. And it's the Agenda 52. And it's got a budget book, a notebook, and a schedule book. And it's three together. And I have not opened it because I got it for a giveaway. And then I haven't done the giveaway. So anyway, so that one's cute. And I like the colors because I like like obviously it matches um and then the schedule book and the budget book so anyway there's those and then also like i do savings challenges um and like from the beginning of my video the stuff i'm putting in my shop i buy those from other people um i also have these for savings challenges these little a6 binders and then you just put the challenge in there and um you just save up and it makes saving fun and I have saved more money in the last three years than I've saved in my entire life um, just because of doing savings challenges there's also books like this on Amazon that have little savings challenges in them that you can get um, so I have bought a couple of these books so I hope this helped if you have any budgeting questions and uh, would like to talk you are more than welcome to leave them in the comments or shoot me an email. My email address is in the description box. And um, I guess this is about it. So uh, go and budget and check out my Etsy shop if you want any savings challenges. And I wish you the very best because it has been really life changing for me to learn how to budget and not worry about money every month and how I'm going to pay my bills. So. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.